this is Becca from Becca's Music Room. I'm a music teacher who talks about teacher tips, teacher life, teacher entrepreneurs, and all things that might hopefully make your life just a little bit easier. Today we are here to talk about classroom management. Now if you are subscribed to my channel, then you probably saw where I was like, yeah, next week I'm going to talk about my classes, classroom management. And then that didn't happen. I was like, the next video, we're going to do this. Um, Yeah, it's been a couple of videos now and we still haven't done it, but we're going to do it today. So I talked recently about um, the classroom management, like fundamentals. I think it's called the pillars of classroom management and they are so, so, so important. So especially if you are a newer teacher or if your kids are just like whack jobs at the moment, um, go check that video out first, or I guess you could wait till after this one. Um, go check that video out so that you can see what like the fundamentals are because they're really important and none of this stuff is going to work if you don't have that stuff. Today we're going to talk about the what I actually do for classroom management in my classroom, like the very specific classroom management plan that I have. So if you are interested in that, then make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and share buttons down below so that other people can find this as well. All right, so as far as classroom management goes, first off, a little backstory so you know like who I am and what I'm doing and why I'm talking about this. I teach elementary music at a school in inner city Savannah, Georgia. So I'm down here in the south. Um, I am in my third year of teaching and I've been at the same school the whole time despite a few times that actually I have like had the opportunity to leave. I keep choosing to come back, which I remind myself about when I have some children that I'm like, oof. I don't believe. And I'm like, Becca, you chose this. Anyway, so I teach at an inner city school here in Savannah. Um, my kids are not, not what you would call easy, <laughs> but I love them so. But I'm at one of those schools that people are like, oh, you're toughing it out. And I'm like, no, I'm just doing my job. Um, like the other day I saw someone I hadn't seen in maybe three, two, three years, something like that. I haven't seen him in a while. And he's like in the music scene here in Savannah. And he was like, oh, where are you teaching now? It's like, oh, I'm still at the same place. And he said, good for you sticking it out. And I was like, what? Like, how do you even respond to that? I don't know. Anyway, so just telling you this so that you're not like oh she must have a little perfect little class and they're all magical no 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 but anyway i've tried a lot of different classroom management strategies i had you know one for like six months and then another six months and then i had one last year that i liked but i kind of improved it this year and this is what we're doing now um so in my classroom, first off, let's start with, I have four rules. I have a whole video about teaching the rules. Um, they're very simple. They're follow directions, be respectful, be responsible, and be a participant. I really feel like I could get rid of all of them except for be respectful and we would really cover everything. So I feel like I talk about that one the most, but I keep the other ones just because I feel like they um, cover slightly different things. But really, you could just say be respectful and that encompasses so that's one we talk about the most. Um, I have them placed on my board in the front and I have like the rhythm of each one. So like follow directions is ti ti ta 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 and I have that written with follow directions. And we talk at the beginning of the year and then again halfway through the year about like how you follow directions the first time and not the 20th time that I ask you to do something and not when you feel like it, but when I ask you to do something. Um, so we talk about all those things and we review them a lot. So that is one thing that I do have to say is really important is review those a lot. Don't just say, here are the rules and then don't talk about them ever again because then they're not gonna follow them. So we review them almost every day with most classes depending on what class it is. And I'll just say, now before we do this activity, let's remember how we're gonna do it. Can you say follow directions and we clap them and they'll repeat them after me. And y'all, they like know them, especially because I've had the same ones for three years now. Um, and so that works really well. When we do an activity, we'll talk about, you know, is it respectful to do blah, blah, blah? Is it responsible to do blah, blah, blah? Um, so they are really familiar with that. So, so that's my rules. As far as my behavior management, I kind of have two layers of that. So I have like my whole class classroom management and then my individual classroom management. 
whole class wise i do a point system so i have just a little piece of paper i'll pop in a picture you can see a little piece of paper and i have these five little owl magnets and when the whole class is on task or doing a good job or they transition well then i give them an owl and it's a point which works out well because our uh, mascot is actually an owl which is kind of ironic i just use them because i had them um so they get a point when the owl goes onto the paper and that's how they get the point now i have my kids for a whole week at a time so i see them like monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and then the next week i have a new set of kids for each grade level so we earn points all week to get game time on friday so they have to have at least 20 points by the end of the day on friday that's four to five every day so that's pretty doable um as long as they're you know on task and if they earn their points then they get to play a game on friday and they get to, and with the older kids i let them pick a game with the younger kids i usually pick just so that it goes a little faster um so they get to pick something it has to be musical but you know there's some choice in there and they really like it and y'all they always 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 want to play free stance and i'm like okay and not any of the other fun chase games i've been teaching you you just want to play for your stance like all right whatever um so <laughs> there's that so that's what i'm doing at the moment i'm considering changing this a little bit um to something slightly different because i just feel like i can't get anything done on fridays um so i'm considering some options for next year i haven't decided but it does work pretty well getting like the whole class to work well and especially like i always tie the first one to walking in the door and sitting down quietly so if they do not sit down quietly they don't get that first point and they can only get four um so different things like that and it's really helpful to you know get those last couple people on it when they're maybe not quite on it um so there's that um so that's my whole class reward now when it comes to individuals we have a school-wide dojo slash ticket system so we have these little tickets that we have made that we print out that um all the teachers in school get and we hand them out when kids are doing well and then um some teachers use dojo instead um, basically a ticket equals a dojo point if you don't know what dojo is i'm just gonna link it down below and you can go look it up um and then we earn points and we do like school-wide incentives once a month and different things like that so that's how we reward good behavior we're not following directions being respectful being responsible being a participant then you will get a yellow card so i will link the blog post about my card system down below and just let you know what they are anyway so i have these little cards that i created you can actually get them for free on my website if you sign up for the free resource library um so you just stick your email in i'll send you the password to it and then you can go and download everything and get all the new downloads that come out um every like month or two so anyway you can get them for free i have um i just printed them on yellow paper but there's also a version that's colored yellow so you can do that anyway so if you are not doing what you're supposed to you get a yellow card yellow card is equal to a time out so if you have a yellow card you cannot play instruments you cannot play games you cannot do the fun stuff in music so you're basically timed out now i do not usually send kids to time out and here's my reason why i used to always send kids to time out when as you know if they got what was equivalent to a yellow card again i changed it um and the problem i ran into is that my room is so big i know really great problems right my room is really big and so when they were sitting in the back then they feel like i can't see them and so they would go to the back and then they would just get in more trouble because they weren't paying attention and they were like rolling on the floor and bothering people and just all sorts of things they just felt like i couldn't see them and so they just would do whatever the heck they wanted um i have found that since i don't send them to the back anymore i just have them sit at their seat that they pay a lot more attention and tend to get the yellow card to go away faster than if they're sent to the back now if they are like hitting someone i might send them to the back but that's kind of like at my discretion and not a hard and fast rule so yellow card can't do what you're supposed to, can't do all the fun stuff until you um fix yourself and sit for a while now i just read a book um actually it's chilling over here classroom management for art music and pe teachers and it was talking about timeouts and like how long they should be and i think i have not been doing them quite long enough um so usually that's about five to ten minutes and i try this is gonna sound so mean i try to have them 
sit out during at least part of a foot activity. So like if we're just sitting and I'm explaining something to them, they're not really gonna care. But if they have to sit out while the rest of us are playing instruments or while we're playing a game, then they're gonna care. So that um, just hurts a little more, makes them feel a little more left out so that they don't want to get a yellow card. So um, if they are doing a good job and then we play a game, I'll usually make them sit out for like half of it and then I'll allow them to come join us. If they're not doing a good job and they have a yellow card and they're still not doing a good job, then they don't get to join us. Um, and then they go to the next step. So with my older kids, I have a writing activity that they do next. So if you get a yellow and you're still running your mouth or insulting people or doing whatever you're not supposed to, then you get a think sheet where you outline what you did, what rule you broke, what you could have done better, things like that. So it kind of takes you through the process of thinking through your actions. And there's a couple of reasons I really, really like this more than I thought I would. Number one is it gives kids something to do. So instead of just sitting out and throwing things at people or running your mouth or insulting people, you actually have an activity you need to finish. So that's helpful. Two, it's kind of like a time limit so that they can come back pretty quickly um, as soon as they get to work. Three, it helps with any discrepancies you might have. So some things that I have seen a lot, you know, like you're talking and then you continue talking. So you get a writing assignment and then they're like, oh, well, I was talking because da da da. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's an understandable reason. And then we can talk after class and say like, okay, I understand that. However, you still gotta pay attention. Um, or little things like that, like, oh, I was not, um, I don't know, like, oh, I was laying on the floor because my head hurts. Then we can talk about, I'm so sorry that your head hurts. Next time, can you come tell me so I don't think that you're just sitting out for no reason and I know that you have a reason and so things like that. Um, so that's been really helpful because it leads to some conversation and you would be so surprised at how many kids are like, I don't know what I did. And you're like, and I hear teachers all the time, they're like, yes, you do. You know what you did. Like sometimes they really don't. Like they don't realize that, oh, this is what caused this, especially if it's been, a minute or two since whatever activity they did. So sometimes they're like, oh, I didn't know what I did and we can talk about what the problem was. So things like that really help. Um, also, it gives them like something they have to do before they can come back. So sometimes they'll be like not wanna do it and then I'll pull the instruments out and then they're like, oh, well, I don't want to miss out on the instruments. So then they do it, as opposed to if they just had to sit there quietly, they might um, be able to come back before that. So yellow card, like a timeout, writing activity with the older kids. I don't do it for first grade. So I have a bunch of writing activities, actually um, one of the same ones that I use, available in my TPT shop. They're like different think sheets and there's different ones for different grade levels and different ways you can do it. And yes, yeah, so there's a whole bunch in my TPT shop. I will link that down below. So if you're interested in those, go check that out because they really have been really helpful. Now I got a question about it. Someone was like, my kids would just rip them up. Listen, that has happened. I'm, I mean, it just, it has. Um, and so what I do is you cannot come back until you finish it. If you choose to rip it up or refuse to do it or ball it up or whatever, then you have to do it during lunch. So that's how we deal with that. Which leads me to my next point. We go yellow card, which is a timeout, writing activity. And if you are still doing whatever you are not supposed to do, um, even if it's not the same thing, then you go to a red card. So a red card is lunch detention, parent phone call. Yeah, yeah, we just got serious. Um, so um, what I do is I have kids come to me at lunch. So they get their lunch and then they come and sit in my classroom except for fourth grade because I have lunch duty with fourth grade. So fourth graders will come sit with my class and they eat lunch with me and I call their parents and tell them that we had an issue. Here's the issue and they're having lunch detention and tomorrow we'll be fine and hopefully we won't have this problem again. So that works really well because they really don't want to do it. It is usually either that day or the next day, depending on when their lunch is in the day. And so it's pretty immediate and I can monitor it pretty well. 
Now, because I have my kids for a whole week at a time, if we have two days of the week where they get a red card, the second time I give them after school detention because clearly the lunch detention didn't work. Um, so that's how we deal with that. I don't usually have more than two red cards in a week. Yeah. All right, so that is my whole class incentive, individual incentive, and my individual um, consequences. Now, I will say some classes just need a little something extra, <laughs> and specifically, usually fifth grade needs something a little bit extra. So my little extra part is called what I call the envelope system. I have a whole video just on that, but I'll explain it briefly here, and if you're interested in more, you can go check it out there. Um, basically, I have on my front table just like a bucket with little scraps of paper and an envelope, and when I see a kid doing a good job, I will say, hey, go put your name in the envelope, and or I'll just go, and point at it and they will go and write their name and stick it in the envelope and on fridays i pull out three names and those three people get to go to the prize box which has candy and toys and just all sorts of different stuff um i do this only with fifth grade and then at the end of the year if there's a class that just needs a little bit more help <laughs> then i'll do it with them too um i have one that i'm kind of like oh we might be starting you on that and it really helps especially just create a little more positivity throughout the class and all of those kind of things so that is one way that i do reward good behavior especially in more difficult classes so um that is basically all of my classroom management strategies for my personal classroom um, obviously these may or may not work for you or for your children um, i've tweaked it a lot throughout the years i used to do the stripe system i'll link that down below too in case you're interested in that because that worked really well it just um i switched it because i felt like i was giving too many um chances and also because then i had to keep up with it and this is easier to keep up with because i can see if you have a yellow card um, but i'll link that down below because you might like that better than this um it works pretty well it's not a magic bullet nothing is and i definitely cannot say that all of my students behave all the time because that would be a big huge lie actually i was like i knew i was filming this video today and i was like i don't want to film this video because my kids were terrible this week but i know that it's not due to my classroom management system and if i didn't have my classroom management system that i do down to a t it would be a whole bunch worse so it is what it is let me know your classroom management systems down below if you have any suggestions that maybe i should try or that you love or any specific problems you have like if you have really chatty classes or really rude classes or classes that really have a hard time with moving or that get too crazy um leave any specific questions down below i would love to answer anything specific and make future videos all about them if you have any video suggestions leave those down below as well so that we can check those out i again i love answering your questions and i want to make videos that you want and need and the best way to do that is for you to tell me what you want and need Thank you so much for watching especially if you watched all the way to the end i hope that this video was helpful if you did find it helpful please make sure you hit that like subscribe and share button down below so that other people can find it as well check out the links in the description for some more resources on classroom management and for those free um cards if you want to use the card system and also for the think sheets that i have in my tbt shop thank you so much for watching and for both me and my little talia have a wonderful wonderful week